Um, before we look in further, our, our buddy Darla is back, and I want to address Trump derangement syndrome. Reinhold has a touch of Trump derangement syndrome. Um, all right. So make sure we bring up the wall, the walnuts episodes where I was defending Trump for two and a half years. Right. Right. And right. I, same, same here, like at a certain point, you you go. All right. The evidence is so overwhelming that this person is all these things that you you can't you can't continue it. And, and it becomes a bit of Trump derangement syndrome in and of itself when you constantly make excuses and buy into the bullshit excuses for why Donald Trump is not every like, you know, Darla, who we love listening because you've added some great perspective the last couple episodes for us to, to have a conversation with our, our commenters as we do this live on Saturday mornings. The post office thing is not a big deal. Corporate press and Democrats, same thing, are delusional conspiracy theorists. You know, the Russia Gate is a conspiracy theory. Like, how many conspiracy theories are there? Like Nine million million at this point, like not, I mean, just around Trump, like you have to continually say this guy has never done anything wrong. It's just a deep state. Mm -hmm. Like that to me is a bit of Trump derangement syndrome when you're not willing to look at facts on, on all this stuff and go, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle or mm, yeah, Donald Trump, like the idea that we're just constantly absolving Donald Trump of every wrongdoing because it's the press's fault or it's a conspiracy theory or the deep state is doing it is just not reality. It's delusional. And so Trump derangement syndrome, in my mind, is really people going, I know you. I know you're a decent Republican. I know you're a Christian conservative who loves Mike Pence. Like I look at some of my Republican friends that work for Mike Pence who are decent men decent human beings and they're defending the most immoral growth politician who is sleeping with a, a porn star uh, uh, like while his wife is pregnant with his child and going allegedly we need to we need to uh, elect this man because the left is more immoral and I just go at some point I don't know what values you actually hold like is your value power or is your value the Christian conservatism that you've been telling me for years join the Republican Party because the party of Reagan at its core is libertarian? And I don't think that's true anymore. I think your true value is that you want to hold power. Yes. And so there's a segment of the libertarian movement that will make an excuse for Donald Trump for anything and then in the same breath go, well, they're all corrupt. The duopoly needs to come to an end. It's like – then why are you helping prop up the duopoly? Donald Trump is not an outside politician who is fighting the deep state. Donald Trump is just a, co a corrupt bullshitter. And you buying into every piece of bullshit because you hate the media, like there are problems with the press. They are completely sold out to the left. He has completely exposed that. But which of us libertarians hasn't said that the state and the press are the same thing forever? It's just that like now there's this other side and well, well they're like the conservative press is sold out to the state too but we buy all their bullshit on the on the right instead of questioning it so never questioning donald trump or never questioning joe biden or never questioning the team that you used to vote for to me is just sort of insane am i wrong no and, and the same commenter who mentioned the tds also stated that Trump was the most anti-war president in their history. And I'm like, how, how do you go from bombing more people than Obama did to uh, most anti-war? I don't understand how you get there. Yeah. And so we'll talk about some of that, the anti-war stuff later. Um, and Darla's, yep. Love talking to Dave Smith. I mentioned it earlier in the show. So um, rewind if you missed that, that set up there um, later on. Uh, so that's my view on Trump derangement syndrome, because I, I I always joked with Reinhold half seriously about him having Trump derangement syndrome. It's just that he figured out all this out quicker than I did. And I think that's a big part of it is once you get out of your bubble and you start taking other people seriously, you go, maybe everybody kind of has a point. It's just the solutions that are wrong. Like if if every person of color that, you know, tells you that they have the same experience with police maybe 
that should be listened to as much as the statistics that come out of the Heritage Foundation. <laughs> you know, like like or Candace all, Owens. Yeah, or Candace Owens. Like, take all this information in, and just because it is ooh edgy and dangerous and counterfactual, like it doesn't mean that that's necessarily correct. Like, look at all this stuff. Evaluate all of it.